My name's Jackie Parry. I'm an artist working in Glasgow, where I've lived since 1970. Um, having been born in Australia, uh, I came here and uh, went to Glasgow School of Art and have, in the meantime, having studied first sculpture in Australia and then printmaking in Glasgow, uh, come to a practice which is somewhere between making prints and making three-dimensional objects, but central to that is making paper. And mostly my investigations or my questions have been asked through the medium of paper. Uh, I think I started making paper originally because I was making prints and I wanted to make prints that were very sculptural and I was trying to find a paper uh, that would take the impressions from a very deeply bitten etching plate uh, but I wanted a thick, quite a thick substrate and I couldn't find one that would behave in a way conducive to what I was looking for, so I started mucking around trying to make a paper that would do. And that's how I've been spending my time since, mucking around with paper. I had a very strong grounding in the history of art, so before I came here as a young person initially, I travelled from Australia so I could come to Europe predominantly and see um, great works of many of the great works of Western art, which hadn't been available to me in Australia. Um, so I've always had a love of all art, I suppose, uh, from Greek and Roman sculpture, Egyptian sculpture, Renaissance, I'm saying sculpture again, particularly respond to three-dimensional works, but also to great um, Florentine and, and uh, Venetian painters, right through to Rembrandt and paintings and etchings and to the, to the present day. I think it's important to, to look at other um, high art and to the, to the best examples of art, whether they have a direct bearing on, on what we're creating at a particular time, I'm not sure, it can't be a bad thing. There's so many artists really I admire. For example, Bridget Riley, who came to my mind especially when I've been working on these Bullockheel images, where the, the series called the Bullockheel series, the wind, uh, the wind among the rushes, um, because I was looking at movements in a field of reeds, and much of her work came out of early childhood experience of walking along the cliffs and and looking at the the wind in the grasses. So I can really uh, get something from that. Yeah, the Tower of Babel series was a response to an invitation by two Australian artist friends um, to look at the legend of the Tower of Babel and to make four works in response. Um, I started working on the one which was the one for fire first, Tower of Babel fire, and I was thinking about libraries and I was thinking about big fires and historically about the Library of Alexandria and I was also thinking about the ransacking of the libraries in Baghdad at the time of the Iraq war and there was quite a lot um, on the television and in the popular press about um, these institutions, well a little. Um, so I then started thinking about libraries, books, information, the ladders. I was thinking about the ladders of firemen and also 
library furniture. Uh, the printed stuff actually came from mainly uh, old uh, second-hand books catalogues, about art books. My mother had Alzheimer's and when we were clearing her house before she unfortunately had to go into care, I came across a Kleenex tissue box <clears throat> which was in the kitchen on the bench where she would sit and have her cup of tea, breakfast, whatever. And I found it quite extraordinary because as an object, was just any normal commercial Kleenex tissue box with the tissues all used, but she had used this as a surface to write on and where she'd been asked if she could write things down in a book and had a book provided for that purpose. She mostly, it seemed, didn't want to write in the book, so she wrote on something else that was to hand and she'd written over this box. So the details of what she'd had for a breakfast, she'd maybe had for lunch, who phoned, what time of day it was, uh, what the weather was like. In another instance of saying that her father had, um, had said to her and which she'd remembered from when she was a small girl. So I found this an extraordinary object and eventually I brought it back here with me. I collapsed it um, so that it was um, flat to be able to bring it back in the bottom of my case. And I had it for some time here after she died and uh, I'd look at it from time to time. And one day I got it out and I took it and photocopied it in black and white and then for some reason unbeknown to to me no really no no rational explanation for it I just uh, took two photocopies made a warp out of one and a weft out of the other and started weaving them together and that's what you see there To make paper, you need a substance which has cellulose and it. it's the cellulose in the paper and its response to water as a hydrophilic uh, element uh, that allows you to, to make the paper, allows for this uh, hydrogen bonding. I usually keep a list of the name of the plant, the family of the plant, and the ways that I've processed it so that if I keep, the sh keep a sample of the sheet, um, I can find out when I did it and um, how I processed it. So if we look here, you can see a really common plant that everybody would have seen it's called Common Rush. It's there in that little photograph. And there's the... Um, there's the data sheet that I've kept, so it tells me that it's Compact Rush. Its botanical name is Yonkus conglomeratus. It's part of the Rush family. Um, it's a grass fibre that was found on a riverbank at Blackadder Greenlaw. Um, which part I use, so it's the stem and uh, minus the seed heads that was harvested in the summer. And you can see here, if you look at this, um, it's a most interesting uh, pieces of what I call really natural paper. Now, I discovered these uh, on the coast, spread over rocks um, by the sea on the northwest coast and they're really sheets of paper which are made from seaweed I guess being pounded against the rocks, seaweed of different kinds 
and then when the tide recedes it's left to dry out. So these are exquisite uh, natural, really natural papers that have come about through a natural process and you'll see they have bits and pieces of other seaweed which have been incorporated into them. They're very soft, um, more like textiles, somewhere between textiles and paper which I think is a really interesting aspect and I often think when I'm making the paper myself um, about at which point it's a textile and which point it becomes paper. In this piece here you can see bits of other fibre. This could be something from a seaweed um, or it could be something from a, a rush that's growing nearby. You can even see some um, plastic twine in here maybe that's come from a fishing net or a rope of some kind to bits of seaweed even to little bits of sheep shit tacked in there. So that's what I call a really natural paper. They're quite beautiful. It's not so easy once you get to a certain age getting places to show, let alone um, to get to show in a beautiful gallery like the Peacock Gallery, which is quite a distinctive space. I've always liked going to Aberdeen from when I first came to Scotland. So, yeah, it's nice to be going back to Aberdeen. Cut. <laughs>